off chapter 3 and verse 9. We had finished verse 8, which talked about the unsearchable riches of God. And now we're going to start with verse 9. Okay? Everybody got it? And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery from which, from the beginning of the world, hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. I wrote myself a note here about this verse. <laughs> what a desire. What a heavenly goal. Think about it. To make all men see. I think that's an interesting thing, to, 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 a goal that we should have. Brian, I think we should have a goal to make all men see, but see what? The fellowship of the mystery. And this mystery, the fellowship is the kononia. That's the word kononia. It means a partnership. And also to see is, uh, the Greek word is photizo, where we get the word photo. So if you think about it, if you give somebody a photo, they have something to remember. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. We need to give people photographic thi things in their head to where they can remember the fellowship of the gospel of Christ. And I think we do that well here when people come in. Uh, I think we show that we have kononia, right? A, 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 a fellowship, a partnership. Uh, and this mystery, this hidden thing, we've already studied the mystery of the hidden thing. That mystery was Christ in you, the hope of glory. Right. And it says this fellowship, this fellowship that we're talking about has been around since the beginning of the world. All from this one scripture, I get this. Okay? It's been around since the beginning of the world. The world there is the aeon, which means perpetuity. Per perpetuity? I didn't say that right. And the age, the course, the beginning without end. The fellowship was hid somewhere. It was hid in God. Mm -hmm. Apocrypto, which means to conceal. To conceal. And he created all things by Christ Jesus. Uh, the word created is kitso, which means to fabricate, manufacture, make, and form. And so what is this fellowship of the mystery? Now I'm going to tell you. God in these last days is speaking. Yes, he is. And those listening are the fellowship. <clears throat> if you can hear God, you are part of that fellowship. Amen. Okay? We have communion with God. We have fellowship. Kononia with God Himself. And we are partakers of the mystery of God. I wrote th three things here. God is God has come, we are free, and we are one. Okay? Okay, hold on. Let's do that one again. God has come, we are free, and we are one in Him, in Christ. Now I passed out a handout called God the Creator. Now you probably noticed there's probably 30 verses or more on this particular sheet. And I probably had to go through 500 or more verses to pick these, these few out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because we know and the Bible proclaims that He is the creator of all things. Amen. So if y'all want to do the same exercise we always do, just pick out one of these verses that, uh, that are it's about God the creator. We've got the heavens of heavens. We've got in the beginning. We've got the light of men. We have no God besides me. Heaven is my throne, worthy. The Lord is great between the cherubims. Not in vain he commanded, visible and invisible, the work of your fingers in the likeness. The sheep of his pasture, he, he that giveth breath, in him we live. We by him, heir of all, the Spirit of God, by the word, by wisdom, by his power, through faith, by his spirit, redeemer, wonder without number, who laid the foundations, my help. Lift up your eyes, for lo, behold, I am making, behold, I create. Okay, who's got one of these? I'll have Genesis 1-1 one, one for 50. All right, go ahead. <laughs> In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Who created the heavens and the earth? God. God. And you know that word, that word uh, is Elohim, God. <laughs> Elohim is a plural word, okay? So we know that Father, Son, and Holy Ghost was there present. Because we know he's breathed his spirit upon the face of the earth, right? So, okay, who's got to know it? You, have you know, it's funny because as I opened up my Bible gateway, because it's easier to go through the Bible, I got Zechariah 14, 9 is what it comes up with, the verse of the day. And it said, the Lord will be king over all the earth. One day there will be no, uh, there will be one Lord, his name alone will be worshipped. 
And I thought about that king over all the earth that he created. Yeah. So that one wasn't on the paper though. Hey, that is yeah. You know, okay. It's a, it's a bonus. Are you are you the paper police? I have Psalms 33, 6. Okay. It talks about stars. I want to read. Okay. The Lord merely spoke, and the heavens were created. He breathed the word, and all the stars were born. Isn't that great? Yes. He breathed the word, and the stars were born. I know. Oh, I just love it. I just love it. I have Jeremiah 10, 10 through 13. Lord is the true God, he is the living God and the everlasting King. At his wrath the earth will tremble, and the nations will not be able to endure his indignation. Thus you shall say to them, The gods that have not made the heavens and the earth shall perish from the earth and from under these heavens. Yes. Oh, I know. He has made the earth by his power. There you go. He has established the world. By his wisdom, and has stretched out the heavens at his direction. When he uses his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens, and he causes the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He makes lightning for the rain. He brings the wind out of his treasure. That's amazing. I, 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 I'm, I'm baffled by scientists that are still trying to find out how things are created. Well, we know it was just the voice of God. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, just the yeah. voice of God. That's all it took. Who's got to know? Hebrews 1, 1, 2, God has been refined in diverse manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets. Hath in these days spoken unto us by his Son, and he hath appointed heir of all things by whom he made the worlds. Ah, so who made the worlds? Christ Jesus did. What it says there. Proverbs three nineteen. By wisdom, Jehovah by wisdom founded the earth. By understanding, he established the heavens. Yeah. <laughs> Psalms one hundred verse three hundred. Okay. Acknowledge that the Lord God, the Lord is God. He made us, and we are His. We are His people. The sheep of his pasture. He made us. Oh, I love this one. Psalms 104, 135. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And O oh, Lord my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty, covering yourself with light as with a cloak, stretched out of heaven like a tent or a curtain. He <laughs> lays the beams of his upper chambers in the waters. He makes the clouds his chariot. He walks upon the wings of the wind. He makes the winds his messenger, flaming fire his ministers. He established the earth upon its foundation so that I will not potter forever and ever. Potter, T-O-T-T-E-R? Yeah, this is the Potter. Okay. Yeah. This is the. Um, what version? <laughs> I don't, it's the Bible hub, but I don't know what version. <laughs> it was good when you read it, though. Yeah. He did stretch out to heaven, so I like that. I have Revelation 21. All right. Then he who sat on the throne said, "Behold, I make all things new." And he said to me, "Write on these words, are true and faithful." Yeah, the word. How many times? How many of these scriptures talk about the word and spoken? Amen. All of them do. Every Because his word is alive. Yes, he is alive, and he makes us alive. And he he speaks through his prophets, and Amen. we are his prophets today in the in the earth. Okay. So. I have Psalms 121. Psalms 121. Go ahead. One and two. I looked up to the mountains. Does my help come from there? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. You know, it's amazing. Uh, I don't, you know, I like to go to caves, and I've I talked to them many times about it. But you look at the, the all, all the the way mountains are formed. They're pushed up, pushed up out of, out from the depths. When I when we were in when we were in one of these one of these caves, the ceiling was the floor of an ocean. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. And on top of us was a mountain. 
Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? On top of me was a mountain, and we're standing there in a hole in the ground, looking at the city, the, and it's got little creatures in it. They had been, they had been you know, fossilized in, in, the, in, the, in the bottom of the ocean. And you, you know, think about when, when Noah, you know, when the earth was flooded, the Bible says that the fissures of the deep came up. It didn't just rain. It come up from the, up from the earth. Yes, it did. Pushed those mountains up. Now, when did that occur? Some people think it, it occurred millions of years ago. It probably did. But the thing is, they're there. You know what I'm saying? There's fossil records that we had a flood. So, believe what you may. The Bible is true. Amen. It's a very interesting thing to see the bottom of an ocean in the inside of the earth. Yeah. <laughs> it, it just proves to me he made all this stuff. Yes, he did. Okay, let's let's continue on. Y'all got these? Take them home and you put them in your Bible or whatever wherever you read at. Because you want to be lifted up. Every one of the scriptures will lift you up. Okay, let's go to Ephesians three verse ten. Continue on with Ephesians. To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places be known by the church the manifold <clears throat> wisdom of God, according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access and confidence by the faith of him. Now, I'm going to show you something here. Now, something you may ha have not heard, okay, or seen before in God's word. God's plan was not only for redemption, but also for the principalities and powers in heavenly places, the angels, the angelic kingdom. God had an intent. It says there, it's a hina, an, an order that God wanted all his creation to know the manifold wisdom of God. Now, I've got three scriptures here that I want you all to look for. Four scriptures here I want you all to look up for me. The first one is 1 Peter 1.12. The second one is 1 Corinthians 4, 9. The third one is Hebrews 12, 22. And the last one is Galatians 1, 16. Talking about the principalities and powers. Okay, so who's got 1 Peter 1, verse 12? Don't everybody speak at once. What was it? Sorry. 1 Peter 1, verse 12. <coughs> they were told that their messages were not for themselves, but for you. And now this good news has been announced to you by those who preach in the power of the Holy Spirit, except from heaven. It is all so wonderful that even the angels are eagerly watching these things happen. See that? Angels are intently wanting to know about salvation. Mm -hmm. We have it. They want to know about it. And that God wants to, it says here, to include them in this eternal plan. So he has. All right? Who's got 1 Corinthians 4.9? 1 Corinthians 4.9. For I think that God has displayed us in Christ Jesus when he appointed us to be apostles and prophets and evangelists. For we have been made a spectacle to the world, both to angels and to men. How about that? That the martyrdom, the angels are looking at it like they don't understand. <coughs> okay, how about Hebrews twelve twenty two? Hebrews twelve twenty two. Yes, Hebrews twelve twenty two. trying to get at with these scriptures? There's one more. Galatians 1.16. I'm trying to get at the fact the eternal plan of God was for the angels as well as us. But he had a plan of salvation for us so that we could show this plan of salvation to the angels. That's what it says here in those scriptures. Okay, one more. Galatians 1.16. Israel, his son, and the angels of the church which are at Ephesus, grace and peace from God the Father Okay, I'll just keep going. I'm not sure if that was the right scripture, but that's okay. Okay, 
God created the church so that the message of the gospel could spread throughout the whole universe, not just for this planet. Believe it or not. It says it's to the principalities. The word principalities there is arche, which means the first. And what are principalities? They, they have the, and the powers. The powers are excusia, force, authority, liberty, strength, and might. And heavenly places are uh, eporanios, which means the existing in heavenly, uh, heavenly realm. These powers, it says it might be known by the church. Certified, declared, given understanding. The church is revealing the manifold. And what's a manifold? Manifold wisdom of God. What do you think of when you think of a manifold? Some of you guys that are motor heads, maybe. Right? A manifold. A plumber. A plumber knows what a manifold is. Yeah. Yeah, I have no clue. A lot of pipes coming together at one time. Yeah. Yep. You got one gigantic pipe feeding a lot of little pipes. Yeah. Okay? We got one gigantic pipe leading a lot of little pipes. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Saying, Holy Spirit. Flow that water in, and I get to be that little one going out to wherever I am. That's a manifold. I see a that woman. is so cool. I learned something. Hold on, let me write it down. I see the woman <laughs> fall in a laundromat one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think of, I think about the washing, the washing machine connections. Yeah. You got hot coat, and you got a drying. Okay. This wisdom is higher wisdom, and. Uh, Wait, before we go any further, I apologize. Is the manifold the center thing and all the little pipes are the extra, or is it all considered a manifold? It's, it's all, all considered a manifold. All of it is a yeah. manifold. I'm doing an illustration. I apologize. Okay. This is an illustration, like I was saying before. You're, if we're going to share the gospel, we need to, have, we need to be able to take pictures and put them in people's minds so they remember the machine the, you know, what it's all about. You know. Uh, yep. And I love the fact that we're on this manifold. i got the Holy Spirit coming in, and so does Brian, and so does, you know, so does Dale. And we're making this thing work. You know what I mean? Because God is God's the one that's the center. You know? If we make Keith the center, it's all gonna fall apart. If we make Dale the center, it's gonna fall apart. Let's keep God the center. We will we'll be We will be the manifold of wisdom of God. Oh yeah, also wisdom, uh, if you ever want to name a little girl something, Sophia is a very nice name. Okay, Sophia, what is, what is, Sophia. What does it mean? Wisdom. Wisdom. In Greek. That's funny that you should say that. I mean, I'm not guessing that if Kathy were to have a baby girl, that would be a good name. Right? <laughs> <laughs> we should write down that when she gets back. So, Dale? <laughs> You're still working on the Dale, Marley. Man of the Valley? No, because. No, Dale Evans was a woman. Thank no, or person of the Valley. How's that? Thank you. Okay, <clears throat> let's go to verse 11. Verse 11, Hebrews chapter 3 says, According to the eternal purpose which is purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Okay. God's plan is according to an eternal purpose. Some people think God, you know, I, I, I really believe that some people think that God put Adam in the garden <coughs> and, and then he let a fox in there to go eat all the chickens. You know what I'm saying? The devil. But that's not God's plan. He has an eternal purpose. Every little thing he did had a purpose to it. Right. Okay? So this eternal purpose was for the, and the word eternal is aeon again. That means world without end. His purpose, his prothesis, a setting forth, an intention, uh, was, which was purposed in Christ Jesus, our curios. And the word curios means supreme control, our Lord. Jesus Christ is the anointed author and finisher of our faith. He is the author of the eternal purpose, according to Hebrews 2, 12, 2. Okay. Let's go to verse 12. says, In whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith in Him. <laughs> Boy, I wish every Christian could have boldness, access, and confidence. And look whose faith. By the faith of who? My faith? No, it says by the faith of Christ. Yep. When you have the faith of Christ, you can move mountains. Amen. That's why our faith is so weak sometimes. What did Jesus say to his disciples? 
Oh, ye a little, little faith. faith. Right. Yeah. He says, didn't you just feed 5,000 people? A lot of people think Jesus fed 5,000 people. Jesus didn't feed any of those people. His disciples did. He broke the bread, gave it to the disciples, and the disciples fed the people. He just broke it once. I wonder how that must have occurred. I mean, not that I don't believe it. It's more like, can you imagine how that must have felt? What? There's still more fish? Yeah. What? Well, you break your bread and do it, it keeps breaking. Every time it's still the same size. I know. I mean, how does that you know? I mean, can you imagine how that must have looked before your eyes, how cool that is? Yeah. And I bet it was good fish, too. <laughs> I yeah. bet you he had good fish. He made great wine, so you know his fish had to be. You know, had, yeah, and he even cooked it. I mean, when he came back on the earth, yeah. when he returned, he cooked fish for me. That means there's fishing in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw you give a thumbs up to Jesus. <laughs> we do a lot of fishing. We do. Yeah. yeah. I don't think okay. you would want me to go fishing with y'all. Okay, let's look at some of these words real quick. First, we have boldness, parahisa, freedom in speaking, frankness, bluntness, and assurance. How many of us do not have freedom of speech, frankness, bluntness, and assurance in what we can say? The governments make it so we can't speak out. Yeah. They're trying. Yeah. They're trying. Yeah. But we need parahisa, boldness in speaking. We need access, it says, and access with confidence. Access is prosagoje, which means to approach and have admission. You got, you got the ticket. Okay? Mm -hmm. We can come into God's presence because of Jesus Christ and his eternal purpose for mankind. And we come with something called confidence. Confidence is pepothesis, which means trust and reliance. Jesus has provided the faith we need. He provided the faith, the peace, the assurance of God, truth and belief to come boldly into God's presence. And you can find that again in Hebrews 4, 14 through 16. We don't need to look that up. It says exactly what I just said. <laughs> <laughs> Take my word for it. <laughs> Take his word for it. Okay, let's keep going. Let's go to verse 13. Uh oh, we got another hand out there. No, it's kneeling. Okay, wherefore I desire that you faint not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with the might of the Spirit in the inner man. Okay. Now, you know, Paul, Paul definitely faced many, many, many tribulations in his life. A lot more than we do. I mean... I wasn't hated by, the, by my, I mean, I have been. Uh, I was going to say I hadn't been ha hated by my fellow Christians, but yeah, I have. <laughs> I have before, but, but not like Paul. They didn't try to stone me, maybe just with their eyes. And their... They, they might have in their mind. They probably murdered So you know who I'm talking mind, about, these, mind, these yeah. stoners, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know some stoners. <laughs> Paul faced many people that tried to stone him, got put in prison, uh, got shipwrecked got by snakes. Uh, had to hang around with lepers. Um, he definitely knew what tribulations were and tried. It, it was a reverse on his life, though. It was a reverse on his life because he was treating those other people the same way. He was the one that was doing the killing and the mm -hmm. and stoning. And what reversal? That, that, means, that tells me God can change anybody. Mm -hmm. And you know, me and Joyce was talking about, we have some neighbors that we have a hard time loving. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. You know? Yeah. You have to it's see past. Really is hard. It's just I mean, really when they hard. steal from <laughs> you and they come in your house and nice to you, and then you, then you find out something's missing in your house, you know? Yeah. It's like, you have to look up and say, God, forgive them. I know there's some good in there somewhere. You know? You gotta love them if God doesn't say you gotta like them. That's true. You know? <laughs> or trust them. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. Or let them back in. Oh, they ain't coming back in. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Not if Joyce is there. That's right. <laughs> and let me tell you, Paul faced all these things because he was called by God. Yeah. Uh, he had a desire, an ateo, to be ask, beg, and require, and pray that the Ephesians faint not. Okay. That was his prayer. Faint not, ekakeo, uh, weak to be utterly spiritless. To be wearied out. To be wearied. That's another question I want to have. How many of y'all haven't been burned out with Christianity? Get tired. Yeah. Yeah? 
Now, our church seems to be thriving because I don't seem to have that problem lately. But I've been in other churches that will drag you to do it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you don't have the joy of the Lord. Yeah. Their attitudes are right. You know? And you're it, busy and, worried about what you're wearing, you know? Yeah. Why yeah. you're wearing it and how you're wearing it, you know? Mm-hmm. Too loud, too which, soft. Which side your hair is parting right. on? Right. <laughs> what, what kind of music are you playing? How long is yeah, it? How come I don't have shoelaces? The <laughs> they're, they're too laid up and distracted with all those and all that legalism. You know? Yeah, and you miss yeah. Jesus. Jesus is the center point. And I found a couple times in my life where it was people would preach things that would draw you away from Jesus. One of the things, and I'm going to warn people, preaching the Old Testament, only the Old Testament, and all, all the feasts, which I've done, will drag you down if you don't put Jesus right in the center of it, like the manifold. The manifold has to be there with Christ yeah. in the center, or yeah. it will drag you down because yeah. it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a book of death, the Old yeah. Testament. You know, thou shalt not. Hmm? And Jesus said, well, all those, for all those commandments hang on thou shalt. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it did change in a certain way. God didn't change, but humanity began to change once they embraced Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. That's, that's what's changed. Well, when and, you look at the Old Testament, some of the thou shalt not. Sorry. I never no, go ahead. I, I, well, one of the things is it was really a mirror to show us where we needed it, where we were dropping the ball. Mm-hmm. You know... It's like, if we don't tell a child not to run out in the street because he's going to get hit by a car, he'll never know that, so he'll run out in the street. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It won't protect him. And that's really all that the Lord was trying to do, to protect us. He really yeah. was. You know, it also says here, if, if they faint not, now he's praying for them that they would not faint, uh, and it says, which is your glory, your doxa, your praise, and your worship. Verse 14, if it had not been for Paul... The church at Ephesus would not have existed. You think about that. There's things that you do that if you don't do them, those things are not going to exist. Like, Sister Norma, take it for example. If you weren't here, yeah. they might be somebody else doing it, but you know what I'm saying? Uh, if Paul had not went to Ephesus, what, 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 what if he'd listened to his buddies? Right. Remember, we were saying at one time, they were saying, oh, you don't need to go there or when they went to Rome. You don't need to go there. That's not God's will. Remember? We, we studied that. But if he hadn't went, we wouldn't have our church today. We wouldn't be sitting here. Mm-hmm. Right. Paul had a lot to do with who we are. And even in his tribulation, he gave glory to God, bowing his knee to the Father. Amen. Now, here's my question. I hand out a handout. We got time. Let's do it. The handout is kneeling before God. What's the significance of kneeling? Well, I mean, even if you want to be knighted, you have to kneel. Yeah. I want to give another example, though. I wrote down something that... I, uh, yesterday, uh, I had to take my dog to get him his shots. And that was quite a chore. That'll because bring you to your knees. He's big. That dog is big. And, and, you know, so... But, do you know dogs kneel before their masters? Especially if you tell them to sit. Mm-hmm. Why is it so easy to teach a dog to sit? And I think that's one of the easiest things to do for him. That is one of the easiest things to do. Because he, he loves you. He, 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 he wants to pay homage to you. The dog does. Okay? Like my dog. Every time he sits, every time he, if I, if I say sit, he sits and he puts his paw up on me like this. Because he wants me to shake his hand. Right. But now he knocks me down when he does that. A <laughs> hundred pound dog will do that to yeah, That's right. I, it was funny when I was getting the the, the tick and tick and the pills for him, the tick and yeah, flea. Yes. They, they, uh, she said, "Oh, we don't have we don't have one that's big enough for it." Uh-huh. And she found him. <laughs> she was kidding me. <laughs> All right, where are we at? Oh yeah, we're here at the uh, at the kneeling. kneeling before God. I found a lot of scriptures about kneeling, and we have just enough time for y'all to pick out a few. Okay. I'll kick it off with Psalms 95.6. All right. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. And we just studied about the Maker. That causes us to kneel before Him, if you're smart. (laughs) Sure. Who's got another one of these? It's too good. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted Him and given Him. In the name which is above every name, in the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, and the glory of God the Father. I am really looking forward to 
that happening in the natural. It's already right? happened in the spirit. But in the natural, I want to see all these kings and people. Okay, who's got one more, two more, maybe? That's 20, 30. 